my name's Cecilia and I'm here today with my friend Stephanie to give you a workshop on translation. So to tell you a bit about myself, I'm a student and I go to Oxford University. I study German um, and because of that we get to do lots of translation at university which is really great. Um, and also at university I study lots of German books and one of the German books I study is called Nachmittermacht and I just really enjoy it. So um, uh, today, me and Stephanie are going to show you a passage from that book and we're going to see if you can translate it. But um, you don't need to worry, you don't need any knowledge of German to do this translation. We're going to show you um, a way you can do it by using a glossary. Um, so yeah, I hope you really enjoy Hi, I'm Stephanie and I'm also going to be leading you through this workshop with Cecilia. I also study German at Oxford University and as Cecilia said, we do a lot of translation as part of our degrees. This means that we get to look at a range of literature and other texts from various different periods in history. I've really enjoyed looking at language this way, so hopefully we'll be able to share that with you today. What we'd like to start with today is just basically thinking about what translation is. So translation is putting words from one language into another language. And that's something that might sound quite complicated, but really it's something you've all done before. So if you think about it, if you hear the word hello in German, you would automatically put that into English as hello. So translation is something that when you're working between languages, you're always automatically doing. So what we're actually focusing on today is creative translation. And that's a part of translation that I personally really enjoy. So creative translation, when I'm doing that at university, I always think, it, think of it as creative writing. So um, you're still putting words from one language into another language, but you have a lot more freedom. And um, so today we'll be putting words from German into English. But when we're choosing what which English words we use, we'll be thinking about what effects they have and what alternative words we can use. So yeah, it's a really fun process. And what we want to translate won't translate literally into the other language. There are certain words or phrases that are unique to a certain language and won't translate directly. These phrases are called idioms and they're often a problem for online translators like Google Translate because the same meaning can't be conveyed. An example in German is the phrase Ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. Literally, this means I only understand the train station. But if we translate it like this, it doesn't make any sense to an English speaker. Basically, this phrase means that something's very confusing and you understand very little about it. So a better way would be to translate it creatively using an idiomatic expression in English, such as, it's all Greek to me. There are other examples of German idioms, such as, jemandem auf den Keks gehen. Literally, this means to go on someone's biscuit, which of course wouldn't make any sense to an English speaker. So we find another idiomatic phrase, which is to get on somebody's nerves. A third example is ich fresse einen Wiesen wenn. This conveys disbelief, but to say the literal version, I eat a brain if, doesn't make any sense again. So we say something like, when pigs fly. So first I'd like to give you um, a brief introduction to Nachmittenacht. So um, as you can see here is the, um, the cover of the book. Um, and um, me and Stephanie have both studied this at university and we've both really enjoyed it. I think what I enjoy most about it is the historical element to it. But also I just think it's a really interesting read. I think that the style it's written in is really unique and I really enjoyed it. Um, so Nach was written in 1937 and at this time the Nazis were already in power and um, the war would start two years later. Um, it shows um, just everyday life um, in this Nazi regime and um, also just shows how normal people were caught up with everything that was going on and also how people suffered because of the Nazi regime. So um, the passage that we thought we'd pick today um, shows a woman who's frantically um, asking the Gestapo where her husband is. So um, let me just read the passage out. Um, I'd like you to focus on um, 
maybe even if you don't understand anything from the passage, I'd like you to think about um, how the rhythm sounds, um, because I think that's something that's um, particularly interesting when we go on to translate this later. So, gebt eure Adresse, Frau, sagte der Beamte. Es wird sich alles finden. Beruhigt euch. Die Frau ist auch ganz ruhig und hart. Wo ist mein Mann? Und immer mehr Menschen strömen herbei. Das Gestapelzimmer scheint die reinste Wahlwertstätte. Mütter zeigen ihre Schwiegertöchter an, Töchter ihre Schwiegerväter, Brüder ihre Schwestern, Schwestern ihre Brüder, Freunde ihre Freunde, Stammtischgenossen ihre Stammtischgenossen, Nachbarn ihre Nachbarn. Und die Schreibmaschinen klappen, klappen, klappen. Alles wird zu Protokoll genommen. Alle Anzeigenden werden gut und freundlich behandelt. doing a creative translation, it's really important to think about the context of the passage that you're looking at. In the case of our passage from Mark Metternacht, it's really important that we know who the Gestapo were in order to set the right atmosphere when we're doing our creative translation. The Gestapo during the Nazi regime were the secret police in Germany. The pictures on this slide will give you an idea of what they looked like. On the right, you'll see an example of a Gestapo headquarters, which is where our passage is set. So it's really important that you bear this in mind and think about how to convey this atmosphere when doing your translation. The words behind the Staatspolizei, which translate to secret state police, also open up a really interesting feature of German. So as you can see, I've underlined parts of the words in the title. And this is because Different bits of each word are taken to form the word Gestapo, so it's kind of like a shortened version of a longer word. There are many other familiar brands that do this in Germany too. For example, the sweets company Haribo is taken from the, names of its, the name of its founder, Hans Spiegel, and the place where it was first made from to make the word Haribo. In the same way, Adidas is comprised of the name of its founder, Adidasler. And milk, the chocolate brand, is made up of the two words for its main ingredients, milk and cacao, which is milk cocoa. So now we're going to start on actually translating the passage. So the first thing we're going to do is a literal translation. And what that means is we're translating the passage word for word. And me and Stephanie have made a glossary, so you don't need to worry about knowing any German. We've given you all the words, and you just need to write out our glossary. Um, the things I'd like you to think about are maybe um, word order that doesn't sound quite right. So um, you can keep the words the same um, that we've given you, but maybe just shift around the word order a little bit. But apart from that, I'd like you to just completely copy what the glossary says, because... For this stage of the translation, we're not using any imagination, we're just literally doing it word for word. So um, what I'd like you to do now is pause this video, and then um, once you've used your glossary to do the translation, I'd like you to play it again, and then I'll show you what I've got. Okay, so um, here is... Um, is what I came up with. Um, so I used the glossary word for word. Um, I made tiny alterations. So um, so um, I said, you said here, yeah, give your address woman the official says. So I just slightly shifted around that word order because says the official didn't sound quite so natural in English. And then um, I chose woman here um, because I thought that sounded slightly more natural rather than missus. But um, again, um, I've just used the glossary, so I'm just going to read it out loud. Give your address, woman, the official says. It will everything itself find. Calm yourself. The woman is also completely calm and hard. Where is my husband? Mm. And more and more people stream in. The Gestapo room seems the purest place of pilgrimage. Mothers turn in their daughters-in-law. Daughters their fathers-in-law. Brothers their sisters. Sisters their brothers. Friends their friends. Comrades at the regular's table, their comrades at the regular's table. Neighbours are neighbours. And the typewriters clatter, clatter, clatter. Everything is put on record. All informers are good and kindly treated. Um, yeah, so that's your literal translation. And obviously there's 
loads of things in there that are going to sound weird but um that's something that you're going to sort out in your creative translation of the passage so cecilia has just taken you through the literal translation and you will have seen that there are lots of things that don't sound right when we translate this way this is because we can't rely on word for word translation and we need creative translation to make things sound authentic and natural. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this to um, creative translation here instead of literal translation. Um, and I'm going to close the glossary because um, we're moving away from that idea that there's a set um, translation of each word and we're going to think creatively um, about multiple possibilities for how we can convey the message of this passage. So the first issue I'd kind of point out is the give your address. I think this sounds quite unnatural here. And we want to change this to something like um, give me your address, state your address, hand over your address. Um, it's really good that we convey the forceful nature of this official, um, but in a way that sounds more natural, because we wouldn't really say give your address in English, so we need to kind of make it more um, natural. Um, Cecilia very rightly inverted the word order here, so I think that sounds fine. Um, but then we come to it will itself everything find. Um, so in German, es wird sich alles finden, and that's an idiom, so um, like the ones we encountered earlier. So we need to think of a way to express this in English that um, sounds a lot more normal than it will itself everything find, which obviously doesn't make very much sense. Um, so if you can think of a way to express um, things um, falling back into their normal order again and the idea of everything being okay um, everything kind of falling into place that would be really good um, then calm yourself doesn't sound very natural either so we need something like um, calm down maybe don't get worked up something like that you can be as creative um, as you like with how to translate that um, and then when we get to the adjectives here hard seems very weird um, so we probably want something like firm or stern or um, any other synonyms that you can think of. Um, and more and more people stream in. This sounds actually really good um, from the literal translation, um, but there might be um, a better way to convey um, more of a sense of rushing of lots of people coming in at once. Try and think of a way that you would um, describe a big crowd of people rushing into one area. Um, and the purest place of pilgrimage, obviously we've got a metaphor here, but um, still the adjective pure can definitely be um, played around with. Um, and you could even work on fitting in the idea of streaming into more of a religious idea to match up with the metaphor of, of, of pilgrimage. Um, all of these family and friends names um, seem fine um, until we come to this comrades of the regulars table, which does sound quite odd. Um, and this is because the idea of Stammtisch, um, the German word, is quite um, a cultural thing in Germany. Um, and it's quite hard to translate because we don't really have an equivalent in England. Um, but it's the idea of a group of people, um, which in those days would have typically been men, um, meeting together um, at the same place at the same time in the same group. Um, so this would normally be at a pub, so it is that kind of idea of a regulars table um, of the same group of people going to the pub at the same time. Um, so this is the kind of irony of the passage that you've got. Um, these people who would normally enjoy their evenings together are now turning on each other. Um, so we need to convey this, maybe through um, something like pub regulars or um, pub goers or um, maybe get the word friends in there as well. Um, but yeah, you can play around and see what you think sounds natural. Um, and then we have the typewriters clattering. Um, so we need to think of a word to um, describe the onomatopoeic sound of um, typing really quickly because um, obviously these people are recording what everybody's saying um, in quite a mass of information. So it's very quick typing, it's very rapid. Um, so we need to find a good word to uh, describe very quick typing. Um, so see what you can come up with. Um, and then we have the issue of good and kindly treated, which sounds quite jarring in English, doesn't quite sound right. Um, so we need to think of something maybe like treated well or um, 
treated pleasantly, treated kindly, treated with respect. Um, there are so many possibilities for all of the bits that I've highlighted. Um, and also the bits I've highlighted are all the things you can change, um, change as many things as you want, um, just so that you think it sounds um, natural and authentic to the tone and the style of the original pattern. So um, have a play around with it. Um, try and think of it like creative writing in English. Um, you can be as free as you want to um, and move away from that literal word for word translation as much as you can. So now we've done our creative translations, I thought it might be useful to look at published translation of the passage. So um, I just want to remind you all that this is definitely not a right answer um, and the whole point of creative translation is that there's so many different things, so many different ways that you can express just one word and I just think that's what makes it so fun. So um, I'm just going to read this published translation aloud. Give us your address, my good woman, says the officer. It will all be all right, just calm down. And the woman is perfectly calm and firm. Where is my husband? And more and more people keep coming in. The Gestapo room seems to be a positive place of pilgrimage. Mothers are informing on their daughters-in-law. Daughters on their fathers-in-law, brothers on their sisters, sisters on their brothers, friends on their friends, drinking companions on their drinking companions, neighbours on their neighbours. And the typewriters go clatter, clatter, clatter. All the statements are taken down. All the informers are treated well and kindly. So um, now you've seen the passage, I'd like you to maybe think about what's good and what's bad. So personally, what I think is, I think um, my good woman here, is quite good. Um, it sounds quite polite um, and maybe something that would have been a phrase that would have been used um, back in the 1930s. Maybe an alternative could have been Madame possibly. Um, but um, so I think maybe that's something that the translators done well. But um, more and more people keep coming in. So what they've done here, the verb German, which literally means stream. So what they've done here is maybe make it a bit more neutral. And I'm not sure about that. I think maybe um, it could have been better to talk about the people streaming in. Maybe that would have been more vivid. But um, again, there's lots of right answers. There's lots of different effects. So um, yeah, I just think it's interesting to think about how different word choices would have achieved different effects. Um, so now I thought um, we can finish on what you think translation is now. So I hope that You've learned from this workshop that translation is something fun um, and it can be something really creative. Um, and also, I think it's really important to think about why we need translation. So as you can see, the literal translations aren't always effective. The first translation that we did was a bit like Google Translate and that didn't make much sense at all. And now we've worked on it and what we've come up with is something that could be published in a book. I really hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you've learned something new about translation and that you've had an insight into what it's like to study languages at university.